Treating Tardive Dyskinesia, a Clinical Conundrum and New Approaches. So Tardive syndromes have a widely varying remission rate, with younger patients remitting about 50% of the time and elderly patients having a less favorable outcome and remitting less than that, although at an unknown prevalence. Tardive symptoms do not appear to become more severe in patients who are maintained on therapy. However, once you recognize a tardive syndrome, it may be permanent. And even in favorable outcomes when it remits, it can take years or even decades before it remits. And so you'll often have to treat tardive syndromes with medications because they can cause distress, they can be disabling, and they're often a reason that patients are non-compliant with their treatment. So I want to give you a treatment algorithm for tardive syndromes, or at least a way to approach them clinically. So when you're using medications that are known to cause tardive syndromes, always use the smallest effective dose. Once you recognize a tardive syndrome, there isn't enough evidence to know with certainty whether withdrawing or switching, for instance, from a typical to an atypical antipsychotic will help, but it's reasonable to try these strategies. There is some evidence that medications, antipsychotic medications like quetiapine and particularly clozapine might improve tardive dyskinesia on cross taper. However, this remains uncertain due to limited evidence. But again, it's another strategy that might be tried depending on the clinical scenario. And as I mentioned above, unfortunately, once they occur, symptoms can last for years in many patients and sometimes be permanent. So patients who require D2 blocking agents that carry this risk of tardive dyskinesia often have psychotic syndromes that require chronic ongoing treatment with antipsychotics. So for severe disabling tardive syndromes, second generation VMAT2 inhibitors are first line with level A evidence. So these are your dutatetrabenazine and valbenazine. Dutatetrabenazine typically starts with dosing at six milligrams twice per day and may increase weekly by six milligrams per day up to 48 milligrams per day. Common side effects are somnolence, diarrhea, dry mouth, and fatigue. And it does carry a black box warning in Huntington's disease as it may increase the risk of depression and suicidal ideation. So for that reason, it's contraindicated in depressed or suicidal patients. Valbenazine, another one of the second generation VMAT2 inhibitors, starts dosing at 40 milligrams daily and increases to 80 milligrams daily after one week. Side effects also include somnolence, prolongation of the QT interval, and Parkinsonism. And it should not be used concurrently with monoamine oxidase inhibitors. First generation VMAT2 inhibitor has only level C evidence and therefore is only possibly effective and has more severe side effects and is thus not a first line therapy. Anticholinergics, although commonly used, lack evidence for efficacy and have significant side effects, especially in the elderly, but can be tried. Clonazepam probably improves tardive dyskinesia with a level B evidence and is a better option than anticholinergics. Ginkgo biloba probably improves tardive syndromes and is well tolerated, has level B evidence. Certainly, both of these agents should be used before anticholinergics. And amantadine is considered level C with extended release amantadine still needing to be studied. Now, focal dystonia may be treated with botulinum toxin, but there's insufficient evidence to formally recommend it. And then there's case studies supporting deep brain stimulation with lead placement in the globus pallidus interna for severe tardive dyskinesia. Again, this is level C. Lowest effective dose of dopamine blocking agent, second generation VMAT2 inhibitors, clonazepam or ginkgo biloba, and amantadine, and then possibly considering GPI DBS is the current treatment algorithm. I want to again call your attention to the fact that anticholinergics are left out of this algorithm, and that's because the evidence right now that anticholinergics work lacks evidence of efficacy, and we know that they have a significant side effect burden. So again, this is sort of one of the new recommendations here is that anticholinergics are much further down the treatment algorithm, if at all, in terms of consideration.
Now, the key points here for this section are that judicious use and minimally effective dosing is recommended for drugs known to cause tardive dyskinesia, and this is the best way to prevent or minimize the risk of tardive syndromes. Dose reduction and withdrawal of the offending medications should be considered if clinically feasible, although again, there's insufficient evidence to know with certainty if this is an effective strategy. First-line treatment for severe tardive dyskinesia is the second-generation VMAT2 inhibitors mentioned above. And then if those don't work or aren't tolerated, clonazepam and ginkgo biloba probably improve symptoms and are generally well-tolerated. 